Hey everyone, it's time for the Thursday topic, not so random thought. Um, and this is kind of a big one. Uh, again, I keep, keep diving into these really heady topics and um, hopefully it, it helps, you know, spur again, conversation uh, because that's, that's what the, the uh, intent for these videos are. Uh, so today's topics is uh, risk and uh, in paddle sports, particularly kayaking. Um, and, and what inspired this was is um, right now I am uh, on, on bachelor status. Uh, Leslie's doing, uh, doing a, a work thing uh, away from the house um, and I call it being off leash or unsupervised. Uh, so that means that Joey gets to watch whatever he wants to on TV, um, which usually involves some sort of motorsport or something like that. But um, a lot of people don't know my history and how I ended up coming to kayaking, uh, which is really kind of, it's a weird tr sort of, um, um, I, I don't know, path. So um, years and years ago, I was really into motorcycles. Um, again, another risky sport. Uh, I was, uh, did some road racing, did some drag racing. Um, I know what it feels like to, to go ridiculously fast speeds. Um, and you know that was my way at that point in time of um, being totally in the moment and focusing while I was doing that. Uh, and that's what rough water kayaking does for me now. Um, and I will say that this might be a little safer, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, we, I keep finding ways to um, you know, up the ante all the time and try different things. So um, it, it's a different kind of risk. Uh, but anyway, I was uh, watching uh, a documentary, um, uh, I think it was on uh, either Apple TV or Prime, something like that, uh, about Joey Dunlop. Uh, and if that name probably isn't so, you know, familiar to you, uh, but Joey Dunlop is the winningest rider in the Isle of Man TT race history. Um, and if you don't know what the Isle of Man is, it's one of the last surviving uh, true road races uh, left in the world and it's also deemed one of the most dangerous races uh, in the world and it is a 30 I think it's a 36 mile track around the Isle of Man on public streets uh, so there's none of the safety you know no guard no, well there's guardrails but there's no you know crash berms runoff areas things like that you'll see on a, on a modern uh, road course uh, closed track um, so there's things like trees, fences, uh, guardrails, fire hydrants, all that kind of stuff. And these guys are whizzing by uh, at an in excess of 200 miles an hour on a motorcycle on these streets. So it is a deadly sport uh, and people continue to participate in it and flock to this, this uh, particular event uh, in spite of the, the record it has for um, fatalities. Um, so. Uh, but one of the things in the movie that, that really caught my attention was is the narrator commented on uh, that Joey Dunlop, uh, through his career, came up in a time period that was not as risk averse and overly safety conscious as we are today. Um, and that really got me thinking because um, the, the talk that I did on social media uh, this is more of a continuation of that because um, most of the arguments that, that happen on social media start with something really silly, a photograph without a PFD on, um, you know, something like that. Uh, and people just go to blows uh, anonymously through a computer, which is absolutely silly. Um, and, but the thing is, is like there are certain, certain people who uh, deem themselves safety police um, and instead of tactfully addressing it they they you know you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that you're gonna get killed you're you know you're promoting you know bad behavior all this this kind of crazy stuff and none of that may be true or all of that may be true but you can't tell from a social media post and, and people just dive in and start you know basically going off about, you know, you know, the lack of risk assessment or anything like that, or, you know, apparent ignorance. Um, 
and, and it's really kind of maddening because you know I think back to the history of sea kayaking in, in particular, and while and whitewater as well. Um, you know, there was a point where none of this stuff had been done. And there were people who were brave enough and did the risk assessment, figured out how to do things, and it's elevated the sport because they took risk. And if we are so risk averse, we're at risk of stagnating. And I think that, you know, that goes in, in all kinds of things, you know, it could go from boat design uh, to, you know, different kinds of layups. Um, you know, we, we're not progressing if we're not trying new things. And if we're so risk averse and not trying new things, then the sport is going to just kind of be dull. So, um, you know, myself, um, I learned my risk assessment um, and, and, and that was through instruction. Um, and, you know, I had some really good instructors that I worked with and, you know, they, they constantly encouraged me to go and do different things, try different things, push my limits within a safe boundaries. Uh, but, you know, safe boundaries were meant that I had backup in case something happened. Um, but things happened, a lot of things happened along the journey to get to where I am right now. And I'm thankful for every one of them. I didn't die, I'm still here. Um, and, you know, yes, I got injured along the way, um, but I had fun doing it and I would do it all again. Um, but I think that, you know, it, it, and this goes back to early on in my career, I, you know, I used to, you know, post in my blog and all that stuff is still up. You can go back and see it. Uh, but I got accused of uh, promoting uh, risky behavior on the water and, you know, had people threaten to shut me down or expose me. Um, for being a fraud and all this other kind of stuff because I was out pushing myself. Um, my question to you is, what if these guys, these explorers that went out on kayaks and did things, circumnavigating some really, really remote um, you know, islands and, and really pushing things to see what was possible, what if they quit and didn't do it? Where would we be now? Um, our, uh, and truthfully, all of our safety equipment was developed because of their exploits, I guess. Um, and this was a way of mitigating some of that risk. And our safety equipment has advanced light years from what it used to be. Uh, keep in mind that the original spray skirts and everything were seal skin. You know, now we have neoprene sp uh, spray skirts, um, really, really high-tech um, grippy rands on them um, to, to prevent implosion, things like that. If we hadn't been pushing our limits, we wouldn't have these things uh, because we'd never have tested it to that point. So, um, you know, th that's, that's my kind of take on it. And, you know, just like in this motorcycle race, these guys kept going faster and faster and faster. Their safety equipment had to get better and better and better. Um, you know, through the years. And it goes for any endeavor, you know, uh, cars and things like that. You know, safety equipment develops because, um, you know, there's some risk involved um, with even just driving down the street. So um, I think that there's a tactful way to do this. And, and you know, coming from my instructor background, um, I'm here to elevate or, you know, educate and elevate not to shout somebody down when they're doing something wrong. And, you know, I've had people say, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that, you know, incorrectly. Um, you know, even, even a, my color choice on the water, I had somebody say, you're promoting uh, an unsafe um, uh, situation by paddling a black boat with black gear on. Um, but if you look, my paddle is multicolored and, you know, flashes bright colors as I'm going through the water. So. Um, you know, that was a particular comment that I had to put away my normal reactionary self, my old self, uh, and come up with a, a um, you know, a tactful way of saying, you know, hey, I understand what you're saying, but you're wrong. Um, and this is why I know that. And, you know, again, speak from experience. And so, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we see on the social media. We see, you know, most of these arguments and things like that. And it comes from, um, for the lack of a better term, ignorance. 
and I, I think that's that's a, a bad thing. And I'm all about finding the good, uh, finding ways to do things, not ways to not. Um, so you know that's that's what got this whole thing going for me in my head, and uh, that's what happens when you leave Joey unsupervised. So anyway. Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts on this are. Are we too risk averse now? Are we taking the fun out of things? Um, because um, this is this is a concern for me. I, I you know I like to go out and and you know manage my expectations and manage my skill and also the amount of risk that I'm taking on. And I'm going to have some pretty risky stuff coming up because it's been a dream of mine for a long time. And that's 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 going to be something that we'll announce probably in the next 30 days. Um, and, you know, it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't live with regret very well. So I just want to go out and do things and, um, and really, really amp it up. So uh, that's it. I'd love to know what your opinion is um, because we've all had that, that, that time period where somebody has uh, taken offense to something that we put up uh, when we were having fun and there was probably no risk whatsoever. But um, but yeah, I'd love to know what your thoughts on, and, and this is, you know, again, an attempt to have this, an adult discussion about, you know, what you feel, and this is what I feel, so, and I'm here to listen. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, yeah, I do have to uh, apologize a little bit. We had a fantastic video. We filmed a bunch of segments, um, and so we're stitching that, all that stuff together. Uh, in uh, the subject of it is how to do the paddle float reentry without tucking the paddle. Um, and the, we, I got a tremendous amount of feedback on that. And the one thing that stuck out to me more than anything is the yeah, but, can't, won't, don't, all these negative things. Um, and I felt like this was an opportunity to, you know, kind of um, change some perceptions. So anyway, we've got a special guest coming on uh, for that video too. So uh, once we get that edited, we'll get that up pronto, I promise. So that's it for, for today, and uh, we'll see you next week.